with projection reaching over 1.23 billion by end of this year. So how do we learn or make the best use of it is to understand what Tenzig have for us and for Citrix infrastructure. So they have a wonderful uh, operating system which can replace or repurpose your existing hardware. And we're going to write exactly learn that today and how to go about doing that and how Tenzig can help us achieve that for our future uh, infrastructure or workplace environments. So with that, let's get kick started. So we have two wonderful speakers from Tenzig, Kevin Greenway and Jason Hudson. So I'm going to let uh, them introduce themselves and then I'll follow them to introduce myself. So Kevin, over to you, just give us a quick intro about who yep. you are, what you do at Tenzig. Yep. Will do. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Manju. And uh, I'm Kevin Greenway. I'm the guy that couldn't get his audio working, or at least it was working five minutes before uh, before the go live date. So uh, yeah, fam famous for that today, I think. But otherwise, I'm the CTO for Tenzig. I've worked in IT for 25 years, and I come from a sort of uh, support and product manage back management background. I've worked with different technology vendors, um, uh, and actually 11 years of that now with, with Tenzig. So uh, during the time with Tenzig, I've really enjoyed working with the Citrix product range. And um, as we'll cover, we have a great partnership with Citrix and Citrix Ready, and notably Manju, who, um, who uh, is hosting us today. And I've worked with Manju many times over the past five and six years and enjoyed a, a great working relationship uh, with, with him and the Citrix team. So I'll, I'll hand to you, Jason. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. So hi everyone, I'm Jason Hudson from Tenzig Technology and I have over 30 years experience in the IT industry. Um, I joined the company back in March 2021 after having a close 10 year working relationship with Tenzig as a retail infrastructure architect at a frozen food retailer, Iceland Foods in the UK. Um, I'm a technical solutions architect and my role is focused on creation and improvement of Tenzig technical content, such as videos, tech support guides, and providing customer solutions for the Windows 10 platform. Great, thanks Kevin and Jason, welcome to this webinar. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. So with that, uh, I work as senior manager for the technical marketing team in the Citrix Ready program. Uh, I've been Citrix for close to nine years now. So one of my primary responsibilities is to help technology partners like Tenzig or HP or any other partners to develop, build and validate and co-promote uh, the solutions which are compatible with Citrix products and services. And that is what exactly we're doing today for Tenzig. So next slide, please, Kevin. Right, so we have a great agenda. So I request everybody to just stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because you're going to hear a lot of good things about how you can make your infrastructure survive for another three, four years without having to invest CapEx or OPEX much, right? So we're going to start with talking about Citrix Ready program and the latest developments that we have with Tenzig and Citrix. And Kevin is going to walk us through with the repurpose OS and Jason will walk us through the demo of repurpose OS by showing us the live, uh, live demo on how to install an operating system on a hardware device. And then we will have a Q&A session at the end. Great, so a couple of housekeeping items before we start the webinar. So as everybody would know, you can ask your question and answers, answers uh, you can ask your questions in the question and answer panel at the bottom of the Zoom webinar uh, toolbar. And we, and we have this webinar recorded. We'll be recording this webinar in other words, and we'll share the slides and the webinar recording post the webinar probably in a day or two. So with that, let's get kick started into the main topic. So for those of you who don't know what Citrix Ready is all about, so we are a program in Citrix. We help our technology partners to build, validate, and co-promote their product once it is validated and approved as Citrix Ready. The Citrix Ready program has a marketplace which which is the only source for customers like you all to evaluate what partner products have been validated, which in turn makes your life very easy when you're about to make this purchasing decision 
uh, decision to choose from the wide variety of devices we have. And it will bind up that it will make it very simple and easy to pick from the one that we have validated as Citrix ready. So I'm gonna talk about more about Citrix study. So the next slide. So the program is a time-tested one. We are in this business for almost more than 16 years now. We are one of the leading technology partner programs. We have over 720 partners associated with the program, and these are active partners, right? We have validated over 5,300 products, and we keep validating over 400 products every year on year, on year and we keep removing the ones that have reached end of life. So with having said that, we still have 5,300 products actively listed on our marketplace. And we have 52 product types, meaning we have 52 different products from our partners verifying with Citrix products and services. So we mainly concentrate on verifying applications, data center solutions, endpoints and peripherals, services and security devices and applications. So uh, like I said, this is one of the industry leading technology partner program. We build the test kits, we integrate, we validate and co-promote and create assets to make our customers uh, to have a better choice and to have the right investment on whatever they are going to make with Citrix and our partner products. So this program is by the way, for every partner type, for every region, for every vertical and every size. And all the test kits that we write is all engineering approved. That means each and every test cases have gone through rigorous understanding of how our customers would use that device or application by end of the day in a real time scenario. We reproduce those scenarios in the form of test cases. And we ask our thin client vendors, for example, at Tenzig, to show us the result that we expect to see. So, and we collaborate with product teams to support initiatives. So we have done many initiatives. One of the initiatives we've done recently is the endpoint initiative to validate the latest features, the integrations, the expect technologies, the workspace, the Citrus Cloud, all of that is actually one of the recent initiatives that we expect to think line partners like Tenzig to integrate and validate. Next slide, please. So the Citrix study program framework is actually built for partners of our customers, essentially or predominantly who are in contact center vertical, education vertical, finance and healthcare. However, we do have our uh, approach. Uh, we do touch base the remaining verticals as well, but we predominantly work on these four industry verticals. Like I said, we have applications, data center solutions, endpoints and peripheral security and services. The three main stakeholders for the program is our customers, partners, and Citrix. To start with, customers can get the Azure compatibility with Citrix products. Like I said, everything is actually validated before we list them on a marketplace. So they can ensure before they make the buying, before they make the buying decision, they can ensure that that product or the application is tested on behalf of you doing the POC. We do that here during our validation process. In turn, this will help you making your purchase decision very easy and we give the power of choice to choose from the ones that are really, that really worked. And for partners, uh, it's actually a higher level of engagement with Citrix. We can do the joint lead generation opportunities and they get higher visibility on Citrix web properties and events. And why do Citrix do this? It's all because of uh, showcasing the products which complement our technology and we to create the stronger compute value with our competitors. And we create the stronger uh, product integration story to address any use case or business challenges or to improve the employee experience. Next slide, please. Uh, so you may have understood by now. So the program is entirely built on three objectives. One, to give the trust for the validated products and to give the number of choices that you can make and to bring out the value of investment that you make, be it time or money. So we give you everything that you need for building the right infrastructure with the right products and solutions. So let's talk about Tenzig. So Tenzig is a partner for close to a decade with Citrix Ready and with Citrix, right? So they have thin clients, they have zero clients. Now they have come up with uh, 
you know repurpose operating system and all their operating uh, and, and the operating system can be installed in any form factor be it a monitor like thin client or box like thin client or a laptop like thin client it can be installed on any device on any form factor so this repurpose os or their legacy known uh, legacy zero os or every other operating system that tenzig has has been validated as a trip study so they are one of the key partners in our ecosystem and we value their partnership and we value whatever they do in terms of uh, promoting and helping our customers to achieve the best that they can do in their business so with Tenzig and with Citrix and Citrix Ready, like I said, they have uh, a number of devices which we have validated as Citrix Ready along with their operating systems, right? So like I said, they are a Citrix Ready partner since 2007, to be precise. And they have thin clients, zero clients verified with Citrix DAS and VDI and many other products and features as well. They support all our HDX technology uh, that we roll out on every build doesn't matter whether it's about on quarter or yearly. So they ensure that they integrate and support all those HPS technologies. More importantly, they support Microsoft Teams optimization and Zoom optimization as well. And all of their thin clients, majority of the thin clients supports 4K monitors with up to four monitors, which can be connected in series. They also support composite USB reduction, which is very, very important in the healthcare industry or in the contact center industry with Nuance, with Philips, or all of us dictation microphones. They also support and have validated Okta for, for SAML IDP, SAML IDP, browser contact reduction for many UCC applications. They have also they also support WebEx, smart card authentication, and improved water one sign, which is predominantly used in healthcare. For tap and go feature, so all of the all of the devices have gone through all these features and validations. So one of the biggest key takeaway that you can hear from us today is their latest offering called Repurposed OS. Now this is very very important as many of as many of you think that what happens to our devices after three years, right? So you end up investing again on your CapEx or OpEx to repurpose the operating, uh, to reinvest on those devices. So here is an opportunity that you can actually repurpose those devices, give it a new life. You can extend their life for another three to four years. So the repurpose OS from Tenzig is purposely built Linux operating system, which helps you, uh, in, which helps us in sustainability, which helps in saving the cost, they have a simplified licensing model, and this operating system is very, very secure. So we recently validated this operating system on multiple uh, form factor devices and multiple make and model of hardwares. It worked as expected, and they support uh, on-prem VDI, Citrix VDI, and they support Citrix Cloud as well. So we're going to learn more about this, how we can leverage on turning on an existing or an old device, give it a new life for another three to four years. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin to walk us through on how we are on how we can do this exactly step by step. What are the prerequisites? What are the system requirements? And what is it all about? Let's hear it from Kevin. Kevin, over to you. Thanks, Manju. That was great. Uh, just before I uh, start, we just have the first poll question. Um, which is, um, have you heard of PC repurposing for your existing endpoints or for Citrix deployments before today's webinar? And um, yeah, if everybody could um, could participate in this, it'd be really, uh, really appreciated. So uh, the answers to that are yes, no, and uh, and not sure. So um, I think we can leave the poll for um, for just some seconds and just let the uh, let the statistics uh, add up and then. Right. Uh, once we get enough data, hopefully we can show that share those results on screen just to see, um, you know, who who we've got with us in the audience today. Great. So the poll is running already. So I'm going to end the poll in three seconds, two seconds, one second. There we go. 
and the pool and here are the results Kevin for you. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. So looks like we've got a mix, good mixed bag here. I think a lot of people attending today have already heard of PC repurposing solutions before, um, but also with a good percentage, um, you know, 26 percent, uh, which is no, and then uh, another percent of, of not sure. So we're definitely speaking to the right people today, which is which is great to see. And thanks for, for everybody's particip participation there. So I'll just start by um, summarizing really the partnership and, and not going to or try my best to not repeat Manju's message, but I do really want to hit on the value proposition of, um, of our partnership with Citrix and Citrix Ready. And, um, you know, both of those Citrix and Citrix Ready have been an extremely strong and value partner and continue to be. And, and honestly, in particular, over the journey of the past three and a half years, as we've seen a, a huge acceleration and innovation in all things HDX, um, you know, notably the remoting protocol and unified communication plugins that uh, that Manju called out, like Teams optimization and Zoom, which which again, you know, saw a, an overnight rocket boost of development by Citrix from March 2020, um, initially due to COVID, and then even through to, to today um, with, uh, you know, as Manju called out, that uh, kind of remote and, and hybrid working. Um, so as well as certifying our products on Citrix Ready, we also have regular sync with product management and development teams. And this ensures we're, we're in sync and aligned to current and future innovations from Citrix. And importantly, all of this innovation requires a really strong support backbone from both sides. And we have this in having sort of really well-defined support and escalation tracks and as importantly um, Citrix in-house setups where we can both connect to you know traditional on-premise Citrix environments as well as Citrix cloud for both replication and, and validation of solutions and as the webinar focuses on our software expansion Tenzig are a long runner as mentioned you know we, we partner with Citrix ready since 2009 um, and as I'll cover in this section, our Linux-based OS has gone undergone a complete rework in the past three years, really to extend its functionality, um, not just on Thin and Zero clients, now PCs, laptops, and third-party Thin clients, um, and, and some more, which again, I'll share when I get to that particular slide. And all of that's backed up by Tenzig's 100% free cloud-ready centralized remote management server, which is uh, known as Tenzig Manager. And, and also our in-house developed Linux OS. So everything that we talk about is developed in-house and our developers are based uh, both in the US and, uh, and Europe. So that takes us on to, um, you know, the replace or repurpose message, which, which is definitely relevant today. And we we'll start really by saying that Tenzig have been in business for actually 20 years. And as I said earlier, I've been with the company for 11 years. And, and even during that time, we've seen a huge change in the market and, and almost a complete full circle in some respects. And, you know, Manju mentioned it just before, but sustainability comes into this particular message. And this is really about how Tenzig are responding to this in terms of reacting to customers' needs, you know, in this topic of replace or repurpose. So firstly, one of the historic benefits of using thin clients, which is now relevant again, um, especially in Europe where I'm based, um, is where we're seeing an unprecedented increase in energy costs uh, and replacing hardware for thin clients really based on their low energy consumption. So where a thin client typically requires six to 10 watts of energy consumption versus say 50 to 120 for a PC or a laptop. And we're actually seeing some verticals like healthcare, for example, uh, rewarded for green credentials of, say, reducing energy and CO2 output, which then makes the switch to thin and zero clients compelling. And additionally, since thin clients are built with energy efficiency in mind, uh, as well as passive cooling, the parts and components for thin clients are built with long life in mind. So their typical mean time before failure is 14 years versus, uh, you know, sort of three to five for PC and laptop counterparts. So that's one part of the message. But then on the other side, again, the key topic of today, which is repurposing um, or repurposing hardware makes for as compelling a story. So I'm not just exclusively talking here about reducing the budget by, you know, sweat the, the old saying, sweating the, the life of the assets, but also the impact of reducing e-waste in having to automatically recycle 
or replace hardware when using a solution such as Citrix with specific endpoints. So this is where Tenzig Repurpose can help with this story by providing the same lightweight secure Linux OS that's used on our own hardware, um, then extending it onto general purpose hardware, again, such as PCs, laptops, and as we're seeing third party thin clients. And where once upon a time, the requirement for a rep rep repurposing solution was say to sweat an aging asset, more recently, actually we've seen a demand for repurpose to provide both the same look and feel user experience um, on modern laptops and PCs. And more importantly, IT teams, as we talk to now again in person, are really struggling. They're really finding it difficult to manage, you know, the tons of laptops that were bought during the pandemic. And now they're looking to bring them into the same management umbrella that they have traditionally with, with say, Thin and Zero clients. So that's again, a, a game changer that we've seen um of, of repurposing these same devices with the same secure lightweight managed os that you get on thin and zero clients and that does make an attractive proposition for it managers today i'm just going to spend a moment to recap on our software offering because it is just important with again the, the journey and the current state of play that we're at so for those that know already tenzig nos is our Linux-based singular platform that's based around a zero client approach that we support for Citrix in this case. And that is designed to run on Tenzig hardware. Then PicoS builds on that by essentially using the same Linux-based architecture, but also includes other multiple um, or other VDI and DAS uh, clients in that OS, as well as uh, browsers such as Chrome or Firefox and any other local apps and plugins. So that enables customers to sort of be more flexible in, you know, attaching to different types of EUC requirements, including not just VDI and DAS, but also say, for example, web apps. Um, and Repurpose then extends specifically on PicoS, where that's been extended, not just to run on Tenzig hardware. So these two are designed to run just on Tenzig hardware, whereas repurpose has been essentially extended to run on third party hardware. Um, not going to spend really any time on Windows 10 IoT, but Tenzig historically have and continue to offer Windows 10 IoT on our thin client based hardware. And that's to support, um, you know, solutions where a customer may specifically want a Windows based app to run on a Windows based thin client alongside Citrix or they may want to um, sort of run a published app through the Edge browser specifically. Um, so there is that as well. And, and last but not least is the Tenzig Manager, which as I mentioned is fr included free and can manage all of those operating systems under that singular tool. Now, um, not gonna deep dive on this today because we don't have the time, but there is, and Jason's going to do a demonstration after me, but there are some really important topics that again, Tenzig's journey for the past three years to bring us to this point today are worthy to call out. So um, we've essentially consolidated our Linux OS and, and rebuilt it from the ground up. And those three flavors that I mentioned before, so NOS, PicoS, and Repurpose are now available as a singular branch. And the vision here was to offer the same unified look and feel, regardless of whether you're running our OS, either on our own hardware or third party hardware. And of course, this you know, importantly includes the, the management tool. And one of our priorities for this new platform was to speed up development time. You know, again, through the pandemic, we were seeing uh, an ever increasing rapid rate of the Citrix workspace app. So we wanted to, you know, make that available in the operating system as quickly as we could. And also, you know, a very important topical topic now is, uh, you know, the, the threat from security and, and vulnerability threats. So that was also a mission to enable us to, you know, securely build that operating system, but also respond to these vulnerability threats as they, you know, as they occur um, in these, you know, sort of worrying and, and challenging times. So with this, we, um, we, as I mentioned, we rebuilt the operating system. We are aligned to Ubuntu um, in terms of um, the 2204 long-term support version, 2004 currently we are expected to um, launch the 2204 based version sort of around end of summertime. And really think of our OS as Ubuntu Lite, 
which is finely tuned, optimized and secured to enable you to enjoy that lightweight based operating system um, for your Citrix consumption. And it's our job to really package all of that together and take care of the, you know, the, the user experience as well as the management um, as with the points that I've, I've, I've covered before. And then just closing off before I, uh, I hand over to Jason uh, for the demonstration part is really just finalizing on, on the repurpose solution. So as Manju uh, touched on, we have recently certified it up on the Citrix Ready Marketplace, which is, which is great news. You can see it's got the, the Citrix Ready Endpoint Premium um, badge as well, which you know takes all of those HDX features, you know the much needed features that a lot of, a lot of our mutual customers enjoy and expect. Um, so you know, go and go and check it out on the um, on the Citrix Ready marketplace. There, in terms of some basic requirements, it is x86 based. As I mentioned, it is designed to operate on both PCs, laptops, and thin clients. Uh, we spent a lot of time, you know, making the operating system sort of you know work much more natively with laptops. Has been the increase in demand over the past two to three years. Um, either on you know, a Tenzig based laptop as well as those third party laptops that we see. In terms of the, st of the requirements, you can see they are very modest. You know, the fact that again, it's a lightweight operating system that's designed to run on a, on a thin client. Um, some added benefits just to, um, actually that's the next part, just to touch on the deployment options. So as far as deployment options go, you can either run it live uh, from a USB flash drive, um, as well as install it um, over any existing OS. And you can also centrally deploy it through the Tenzig Manager. So that's good for sort of bulk deployment where you want to deploy through, say, a Pixie based uh, option as well. And then coming then to the added benefits, which are sort of not necessarily featured in competitive solutions. So as Manju again touched on, we have a simplified licensing model. So what does that mean? It's uh, essentially a perpetual license, which includes one year of software support. So that license is, you know, uh, um, valid, you know, from day one through the life of, of the OS. And it's essentially the software support that you purchase from that point, either on uh, essentially on an annual basis. Additionally, the license isn't specifically registered to hardware and it is transferable ad hoc by, the, by you, the end user, to different hardware. And again, we have a singular management tool, whether you're running our own hardware or third party hardware. But another really big call out here is the fact that Tenzig are a single stop shop for both hardware and software. So, you know, we provide the end to end support under one roof, whether it becomes um, an operating system software issue or perhaps an integration issue with with um, any specific hardware. Um, and I've just included the link at the end so that you can go to the, the site if you are interested to register for your download and, uh, and, 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 and get playing. So with that, before I hand over to Jason, I'm just going to fire up the next poll question, which is, do you think your organization needs this solution for your users? Um, and again, the answer there is yes, no, or, or maybe. So again, we'll just leave that uh, for a few minutes just to run. Not a few minutes, a few seconds. Really not working well today, that audio <laughs> issue. Uh, <laughs> so it's already up. So I see the number of people are watching. Still continuing. I'm going to bring it down in three seconds, two seconds, one second. So all done. Awesome. All right. So with that, Jason, I'll, I'll hand to you and um, I'll let you take the floor with the demo. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. And just let me share my screen. Okay, so it's time for our demo video. During this 12 minute video, we'll get you started with Tenzig Repurpose and guide you through the following steps. We'll be creating a repurpose boot key installer. We'll be booting and running repurpose live from the USB key. We'll be installing repurpose from the boot key to the local hard drive of the legacy device. 
We'll be creating a Citrix self-service connection on the repurposed desktop. And finally, we'll demonstrate a connection into one of our Windows 10 Citrix desktops from inside repurpose. Hope you enjoy it. Let's just load that up now, two seconds. Just locate it on my drive. Okay, can everyone see that? Yeah, yep, it's looking at Jason. Great. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's go. Hope you enjoy it. In this section, we'll show you how to use the installer application to build your USB key. So you can boot your own legacy devices to either install repurpose on the local disk, or if you prefer, just run repurpose directly from the removable USB drive. It's up to you. First, we need to insert a USB drive into our own Windows PC, as this is where the repurpose installer application will place all the necessary image files needed to run repurpose live or if you prefer to install on the legacy machine. When you first download the RPOS installer zip file, you'll need to unzip the contents to a local location on your own PC first, before you can start to build the USB key. Once we've unzipped the contents, we need to locate the RPOS installer.exe and just run it. You'll then be presented with a screen that asks you to locate a device to place the installer content onto and also a disk or ISO image that will be used later on to run or install our new repurpose operating system. If we click the drop down list, we only have one USB device attached to our local PC, so we'll select that. Now we need to select the ISO or disk image. So we click the select button and then locate our repurpose ISO image. This should be in the same folder that you just unzipped the installer content to. Highlight the ISO image, click open, and if you're happy with the device and image, click the start button. We can see a message presented informing us that all data on this device will be destroyed. At this point, please make sure that this is the correct device, as once you click OK, the process will format this USB drive. Remember, if you're not sure that this is the correct USB device, then click Cancel and just double check before you continue. Once we've clicked Start and clicked OK to continue, we can see that the USB drive is formatted and the ISO content is being copied to it. This process only takes a few minutes, but we'll just fast forward for the purpose of the demo. Once complete, the installer will display a message stating that the RPOS installer successfully formatted the drive and a green status bar showing ready. Just click the close button and eject the USB key from your own Windows PC to make sure the contents are safe and recorded. In this section, we're going to take our existing Windows 10 device and boot it up to run the previously built USB-based repurpose OS in live mode. Insert the repurpose USB key into your existing legacy device and then restart the machine. You'll need to make sure that your BIOS is set up to boot from USB media for this to happen. If it isn't already enabled, just go into the BIOS, set it to boot from USB devices, save the settings and then reboot again with your repurpose key still inserted. There's a good chance that our BIOS settings shown here will be different from your existing devices. So check with your system administrators for information on how to do this. Once the device begins to boot, we can see the Tenzig logo. And shortly after, the configuration wizard is displayed with the end user license agreement. 
Scroll down to the bottom of this and click Agree. Next, we're presented with options to select the country in which we'll be using this repurposed device and also customise any keyboard specific settings. If we click Next, then we can set the time zone, date and an NTP server address if we're using one. If we click Next, then the wizard completes and the repurposed desktop is displayed with the shutdown and control panel icons in the bottom left of the screen. In this mode, we're running the repurpose operating system live from the USB drive that we booted from. But if we wanted to, we also have the option to install repurpose from this USB device directly onto this physical hard disk so that we overwrite the existing legacy Windows 10 OS already installed. This gives us the benefit of being able to use this converted machine without booting and running from the USB key in the future. However, if after you've installed repurpose on the local hard disk, you can, if you wish, still boot and run it from the USB boot key. So you have many options at your disposal. In this section, we'll show you how to install repurpose locally on the hard drive of an existing legacy OS machine. And then we'll remove the USB boot key and watch repurpose boot up from that newly installed hard drive. If you've been running your repurpose OS directly from the USB key in live mode, then during this install process, everything previously created and saved to the key will be ported over to the local hard drive. This includes any connections and any setting changes that you might have made. It's really useful if you wanted to build your repurpose key with all your connections and settings, and then finally deploy and install to the hard drive of your existing legacy device, all in one go. On the desktop, we need to double click the icon named Installer in the top left, and we're presented with the repurpose installer screen that displays our physical disk to install on. Before you start the installer, just make sure that you want to overwrite the existing OS on this disk, as the installer will format the drive as part of this process. We just click the Install Now button, and the process will format the disk and begin copying all the necessary repurpose operating system content to the physical drive. One of the big benefits of installing from the USB key is that you can modify the content and reinstall your repurpose OS as many times as you want. Just boot from the key, make any changes to it, and then run the installer again. All existing content on the local hard drive is replaced with the complete content of the key. It's that simple. This install process only takes a few minutes, but for the purpose of the demo, we'll just skip forwards. And once finished, we can see the reboot message, asking if we want to restart the device. Remove the key first and click Yes. As we want to boot from the local hard disk next time and not the USB key. Once repurpose is booted back up again, you'll notice that the installer icon has now been removed from the desktop. So we know that we're running from the local hard drive now as the USB key has been unplugged too. However, if we wanted to, we could plug the boot key back in, restart the client, and we'll be running live from the key, just as we were before. In this section, we'll show you how to create a Citrix self-service connection on the repurpose endpoint, and then show it connecting to a Citrix Windows 10 desktop. To create a new Citrix connection in repurpose, right-click the desktop and select Add Connection or click the gears icon in the taskbar and select new connection. Now we can see all our available connection types installed with this release of the repurpose OS. We want to install a Citrix self-service connection type, so we scroll down to that option, highlight it and click OK. A few seconds later, we can see a whole host of connection options available to us.
this UI mode to be windowed or full screen log off. If we look at the reconnection options on the left, we have the option to enable it so that a disconnect will reconnect automatically. Reconnection delay enables to set a wait time in seconds before it attempts a subsequent reconnect and retries specifies how many times a reconnect will be attempted before giving up. If we move down to the advanced section, then we have a whole host of configurable items to choose from, including multi-monitor modes, browser content redirection, and USB redirection, and many more besides. Once you're happy with your configuration settings inside your new connection, then just click Save and you'll see it appear on your client desktop with the name you specified. If you need to modify any of these settings for this connection, just right click the desktop icon and select Edit. To launch this new connection, just right click the icon and select Open or just double click on it. First, I need to select my account type and click OK. The next screen is where you key in your user credentials and domain name. Remember, we already did this when we set up the connection a few moments ago, so we can either overtype them here or just click Log On. Once our Citrix workspace environment is loaded, I just need to click my favorite Windows 10 desktop, and a few moments later, I'm successfully logged in. Thanks, Jason. Okay, you're welcome. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so. Before we go to q and A, I'm just going to ask our last uh, our third and final poll question. Um, are you interested in taking up a, a Tenzig demo for your Citrix deployment? Um, so options are yes, no, or maybe in the near future. The poll question is up on the screen. Thanks, Manju. Great, I'm going to leave it for another 10 more seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Thank you. Thanks very much. You're welcome. So I think that takes us to the, uh, the Q&A section now. We have had a few questions coming in uh, which I've just been answering in the background um, whilst Jason's been running through the demo but I, I will just cover them off for the audience benefit as well and uh, feel free to ask any more um, along the way as well before we end the webinar we do apologize that over just by a couple of minutes out. So does it support secure boot? It's a great question. So just to clarify that, um, we do support both UFE and legacy BIOS. The secure boot has been done from a development perspective, but it's currently pending um, approval through the third party process that has to approve that. Um, so we are at the mercy of that before we do launch that. Um, but but uh, essentially, Secure Boot is coming soon once that uh, sign off has been done. The next question, uh, which again is a very good question, is I assume that these connection settings can be done centrally through the Tenzig Manager and pushed via policies. So we absolutely can do that. So the way that Jason demonstrated that was through the local OS. But again, with what the work that's been done in the OS, we use um, a, a standard XML format where we can essentially do the same push and pull whether you're in the Tenzig Manager web console or the local console. And we use the concept of template. So we have a template that um, can either be pushed to clients on demand 
as well as um, automated through configuration groups. So we can create filters of different groups of, of clients based on either location or worker profile. And those templates are pushed down just as uh, XML data. The, uh, the next question in was, is it possible to have other apps running on Tenzig at the same time? So another great question. So that mode that you saw Jason running is, we refer to that as the desktop mode. And that is the default mode for repurpose where you can run multiple apps. So for instance, you could run a browser as well as the Citrix workspace app simultaneously. But then we have different modes. So we do support also the NOS modality if you're using it in a, in a pure VDI mode where you just want to run just the Citrix workspace app as you would in that thing, the, the zero client approach. So you have the best of uh, each of those options. Uh, the next question is, um, what about package management? Um, so what we do is packages like Chrome and the Workspace app are bundled into the firmware. And what we also do, and they're freely available from the website, is we then, so say for instance, when the Workspace app is released after the fact, we package those as add-ons, which are freely available from the website, and you can install those on top. So essentially there are, a squash file and uh, that we package the workspace app into the uh, the client and we push those through the the Tenzig manager again. Uh, the next question I think we're running out of time then is um, how does your technology work with Improvata single sign-on? So we've partnered with Improvata for I think for probably about seven years and the Improvata is supported currently for both for for Citrix deployments and essentially um, that works again as a, as a modality. So if we're working in an Improvata environment, we would enable the Improvata functionality and that essentially intercepts the Citrix traffic. So we, uh, we, we uh, implement a, a web-based connection to the Improvata appliance. We do the authentication with Improvata, either the tap and go most frequently or some other forms of, of authentication. And that then hands us off to a Citrix connection. So again, that's well supported um, through, that, uh, through that particular solution. Um, and I think that brings us to the end of the, uh, the webinar. Uh, again, we, we have overrun. And, um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll answer then any other questions that we didn't get opportunity to answer in the webinar afterwards. So we'll do a separate follow-up to those. Right. So, Kevin, thank you for reading all the questions and answering them. So there are four more questions, which, as you mentioned, so we can revert back to them via email. I have the email addresses as well, along with the questions. So for those audience who whose questions were not answered, be rest assured that we will revert back to you answering your questions, showing the slides plus the recording. So uh, without taking much of your time, I want to thank you, Kevin and Jason, for running us through with all your wonderful stuff that you have for our Citrix customers. So this is great. We really look forward for working with you and doing one more webinar in the near future. So for all the attendees, thank you for staying. And we will get you, as promised, all the recordings and slides as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Manju. And thanks uh, Thank everybody involved, Jason, and uh, and of course the uh, the attendees for your time today. Much appreciated, right. and hope you've enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank you. Have a nice Thank you day. Again. Bye all.